right here? Uh huh. The recording? Yes. All right. We ain't gonna fall back down. We're not gonna fall down. <laughs> this is my first time. I, I'm a little nervous. Ellie is sitting for his first time on the hammock over at Longhorn Lessers. It's a heck of a drop off, isn't it? Yeah. How many foot down to the to, to the first ledge? Right here is like probably 30. <laughs> That's a 30 foot drop, y'all. Yeah. And uh, that would not be be fun. So Ellie's very uncomfortable. Stop, relax. I don't get how Shane McMahon makes this look so easy. 30 <laughs> foot drops in wrestling. Uh huh. L.E. Uh, came out, and I says, I got a question to ask you, and I want to do it on video. And I said uh, that I'm blessed. You know, your dad is blessed that uh, I have Longhorn Lusters now as a uh, beautiful piece of property. And uh, there, it will eventually be the house, the home, to several of our animals. Are you uncomfy still? You scared? A little bit. You want to stand up? I'm going to stop rocking. It's, it's, it's fine. I think I'm okay. And I says, of course, you know about I'm a survivor. Uh, you know, the acres that we have over there and all of the animals. And I said, if I was to die today, if I was to die today and you were to either inherit Longhorn Lester's or I'm a survivor and you being the oldest son would have first, you know, first dibs, Lex would get the other, right? I says, would you rather have Longhorn Lester's or I'm a survivor? And I'm about to hear his answer. I would have to choose I'm a survivor. And I know... It's not named after you. Longhorn Lester is your namesake. I know. His name is Lester, y'all. His name is Lester. He's the third. It is. I just cannot do desolate. I cannot do isolated. Um, I was joking with Megan that if we lived here, we w I'd be so lonely. Not with her because Megan is the first person I want to share my life with. But after that, I, I want to share my life with thousands of others. Elaine, so you have God. You can't see the God surrounds you here. This is... It is desolate. It I, is I very feel like, isolated. We I, are way out here. I feel like God puts things on your heart also. And what's on my heart is to share my life with others. I think there's a reason that... You have social media for that. You don't, okay, so right now you're young. And so you have a whole group of friends that you hang out with and lots of family members. But you don't think as you get older, people over time begin to kind of like separate themselves. And you don't think that as your friends begin to go off with their own families and and stuff like that, that that you might at some point look in your life and say, you know what, I'm completely content with being here, isolated from a lot of the riff raff in the world. No, I, I mean I suppose it's possible, but it's not. It's not even about three or four friends that are my ride or dies that I must see. What it's about is, if I want to play football, I want to be able to. <laughs> you don't want to drive an hour. Okay. Well. I want to be able to sign up for a football league and know that I'll meet like-minded people who enjoy the same game that I do and kind of develop a connection with them through that way, like I've done. I play football every Wednesday night with uh, people that I just named that are like that. Well, at the age of 50, I don't have to worry about signing up for football anymore, so I guess my life's a little bit different. The good thing even, is... Even on Xbox, I'm such a social person that even on Xbox, video games... Most people like my dad and Megan and others that play, they'll play the little single player solo games just kind of to pass the time, to relax after a long day, and they'll feel accomplished when they beat a mission. That's a waste of time and it's useless and it's not rewarding or fulfilling to me. What's rewarding or fulfilling is only going on an online game and playing and being in the game chat with 10 other people all talking and showing off my player that I created in basketball or whatever. All right, so the only thing is, I guess in one way I'm lucky that Lex starts with the letter L. Yeah. So long horn Lex. The the brand can stay the same. We'll have to change the sign. I'm not saying I would Instead turn of I'm, long I'm horn not, Lester's, I'm not, long horn Lex. I'm not <laughs> I'm not saying I would turn down this place, but if I did have this place I would have about twenty people come out for a football party or something. I'd have to have people there to make it the same. So you're saying that as far... Okay, so let me ask you... Okay, so fine. Let's here scoot over a little bit so we can place it together. So categories. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm scared. Watch. I'm going to show you something. Look what you can do. Sit this way. It'll make you feel a lot more comfortable. Okay. Is that better? Yeah. Does that feel weird? A little bit. <laughs> can, the, can the camera still see us? Yes. Both? Yes. Okay. Are you sure? You move like this if you're All not right. sure. All right. All right. So listen to this. Just like a seesaw. <laughs> oh, hey. <laughs> Just Ellie and Dad over here on the at, uh, the prayer place having a little conversation. Um, as far as 
isolation, or as you said, desolation, which is completely a different way of looking at things. You say this place is a lot more isolated slash desolated. All right. So whereas I see isolated as a pro, you see it as a con. Yes, people, okay. people who may not be, not everybody is a people person. It doesn't mean that you don't have a good heart or that you don't care for people because my dad cares and loves for all kinds of people. But some people are just not super social. They're not people kind of people to where they can hold long conversations to where they can just sit there and shoot the breeze and talk about stuff. And so if you're not that kind of person, then this is like your heaven. heaven. But it's yeah. like it's like a nightmare for somebody who <laughs> everything that I do in life I need to share with somebody. I'd prefer it to be with Megan and my family, but I need to share the things that I do, the things that I build. I may not build fences, but I do build things. I'll talk about that in a later video. But the things that I build, the things I create, the accomplishments that I have, it doesn't feel very rewarding if I'm the only person who knows that I accomplished said thing. So as far as let's just talk about the uh I don't want to say beauty because I think that both properties are beautiful in their different ways. So, obviously, I'm a survivor has a lot less trees, a lot more pastures. Yes. Whereas Longhorn Lusters, you have, it might be more land. The ratio, though, is a lot more trees to pasture here. Yeah, and think about that. So, Longhorn Lusters is only five acres of more land. But you would never know that when you drive up because there's so many woods. Yeah, true. And so you're more of the open, pastured kind of a person. Okay. So, oh, well, that's interesting. Uh, not that I plan on dying anytime soon. Because in my head, I'm envisioning a football field, and a football field is open, <gasps> open field. It's not trees and stuff. And hills. Yeah. Oh, my God. Could you imagine a 100-yard football field at home would look like this? But here it would look like this because there's a big old dip in the bottom. Yeah. Oh my God. And picture if it ever. If you throw a football, it'll go over the hill. You don't know if your guy caught it or not. Yeah. Picture every 10 <laughs> yards running into a stump or something also. That Stop. Would be... It's not that bad. But playing football here would be hard because yeah. one team's going uphill, one's going downhill. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, Shelly. I never thought about that. We gotta throw passes here at some point. We're gonna have a football today. Yeah. All right. Next visit, we're bringing a football uh -huh. to see how hard it is to run routes on the pastures at Longhorn Lester's. All right. Sounds good. All right. Good. Hey guys, Ellie and Megan here. We are delighted that you want to join us for my first ever episode of Tuesday and Thursday Talks. Today is our first edition of the Tuesday Talks, and as you can see, our first episode is going to be right here at Longhorn Lester's. I've been here once before. This is my second time. It's Megan's first time. I think that both of us are incredibly impressed with how far it's come in such a short amount of time. But I saw on my video when I asked you guys to suggest, which I wanted to see, by far the majority of you requested, take a tour of Longhorn Lester's and show us what it's about So and give us your thoughts on it. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Go ahead and open the gate, bubs. Fire it up. Gotta be patient. Gotta be patient with it. Give it a minute or two or three and we'll be good to go. All right, let's give y'all a tour of Longhorn Lester's. Let's go. All right, so as we approach the main area, you'll notice that the driveway divides Longhorn Lester's into two sides. On the right side, you have 10 acres. And on the left side, you have 10 more acres. The right side, when it gets all said and done, will be for the horses, the cows, the animals like that. And the, the left over here will be for the ostriches. Only three of the four ostriches are coming here. Carl, Debbie, and Tina. Wanda, due to not being quite as healthy and having a few injuries she's nursing, will be staying at I'm a Survivor Sanctuary with the Littles. That'll be best for her. So over here at Longhorn Lester's right now, you have three main areas. This here is called the, what did he call it again? The shop. The shop. Over here we have the, the garage. And then way over there is the barn. I remember the name of that one. All right. To me, the coolest thing about the shop would be. What are they called? The bug out bites? Bug out boxes. Bug out boxes. Bug out bags. Bug out bags. And this stuff 
is filled with all the different possible things that you would need in an apocalyptic scenario. Like if electricity went out, if there was total anarchy, like if you just had to fend for yourself, just like in the old days, you got your life straws, you got your mosquito nets, you got your Irish spring, I don't know what that is. You got various foods and I- Deodorant soap. Deodorant soap stuff. In the black trays or the black containers in the bottom, you have your various food items that won't spoil. You got your water right there. Ooh, got your, you, you got your hand sanitizer, your alcohol. Long story short, all the things that you'll need to survive should the economy shut down. We you hope that your bug out bag today. We hope <laughs> <laughs> it just sounded like a commercial, so I had to. <laughs> I do have a commercial type voice, don't I? Yes. A little bit. Call 1-800-BUG-OUT-BAG <laughs> to start yours today. We hope we never need these, but just in case, it's better to be safe than sorry. Better to be prepared than to be ill-prepared. Let's go ahead and go to the next area of interest. That would be the garage. All right, guys. So we're standing in the garage right now. And my dad has done something pretty clever with the way that he designed all of this. So as you can see, we have our entrance right here. And outside of the entrance is just the, the front yard, you could call it. And then outside of this other entrance right here, you have the little pasture where the longhorns will be staying. You got the fenced off area right there and right here and such. And what my dad has designed is really clever. His lawnmower is right here. So if one day he decides that he wants to, let's say he wants to mow the front yard, he doesn't have to open and close a bunch of gates like what would be right there the way that it is. I, I'm a survivor sanctuary. All he would have to do is just go ahead and pull that open and then fire the lawnmower up in there and get it done. Park it back. And if you wanted to use the tractor, it'd be likewise. Instead of having to get off of the tractor, go manually open a gate that is chain linked or whatever, you just pull that open and you can go put the tractor in there. Or you can just bring the tractor in here and do whatever you got to do. Pretty clever the way that he designed it. <laughs> All right, as we approach the barn, this here is the pond that they have dug. It is a lot longer than the one at the sanctuary. As you can see, the more that I come this way, it goes a very, very, very long ways. Very long. Now that we're here, let's see what we've got. We've got one, two, three, four on this side, four on that side. So eight individual stalls in a nice little alleyway up the middle right here. So pretty well set. Let's go look at the back. Woo! All right, so over here, my dad has fenced off three. It's not complete yet, obviously, but the final plan will be to have three fenced off areas. Right here for one of the female ostriches. The middle right here for Carl. And then, I don't know if you can see it over there, but there's, there's a third fence. So the third area over here will be for the other female ostrich, because remember, there's three coming. Two females and Carl. So Carl will be in the middle right here and he will have access to either female that he wants to be with, but the two females on each end will not have access to each other so that they don't start fighting because during mating season, females can get competitive in different things. So Carl can go with either one, but they won't be able to go with each other sort of a thing. Okay. Remember, put it in the, whatever he said to do, the to go yeah. down and up. Y'all are going to see, we're about to come down a decently slick. <sighs> it's not steep right here, but right there, it gets pretty steep. So put it in the setting you're supposed to, please. I don't want to go flying. That's what I'm saying. We're going to put it in four-wheel drive right now. What does that mean? Four-wheel drive means all the wheels are turning. Woo! Or all-wheel drive. Let's see. We know who clearly doesn't know things about cars. <laughs> and it's funny because my dad's a mechanic, That's so she should right know. Now. Don't worry, I'm as scared as you are, so I'm going to be super duper careful right here. This is like a much scarier version of a roller coaster. It's not nearly as steep as it looks, don't worry. And <laughs> there, there goes the water. We'll catch you on the way back up. Yeah, we'll come back to that. 
I thought it was my phone or your phone or something. No, no you're holding my phone. Yeah, I look, know. Look at that right there. The, look how high it looks from this angle. You know, it looks like this is going to sound so terrible. It looks like something out of Zoo Tycoon that I would have built when I was younger. Oh, man. This is a little bit steep right here. We'll be okay, though. Eesh. It's okay. We're good. We're good. It does not look bad on camera, but it feels terrible. Oh, my gosh. Lean back. We're good. Eesh. I'm standing. You're standing? <laughs> yes. All right. We made it. No worries. Look at that there river. Look at that. That would be the Nebraska River for those of you that are wondering. <laughs> I hope y'all enjoyed this first episode of Tuesday and Thursday Talks. Y'all be sure to come next time to Thursday at 5 p.m. Central. Every Tuesday and Thursday, 5 p.m. Central. We'll I be am, here. I'm honored to be your first guest on your Tuesday, Thursday talk. I made, a I, I made a video asking what the Facebook and YouTube family would like to see, and it was vast majority was go to Longhorn Lester's, get a tour, get a video with your dad. Oh, and so, I love it. Yeah. Yes. Ellie's been here before, but uh, we've never had like an interview type thing. No, we've it never was never showing everything off. It was to check it out and they were like working. So it was kind of busy and stuff. So yeah, today I took the day off just to visit and hang out. Yeah. So, all right. Thank y'all. All right, thank guys. You, Ellie. I love you. I love you too. Uh, this is kind of awkward. <laughs> <laughs> your boy Ellie out. And Le Le Lester's out too. <laughs> ah, help me up, Ellie. <laughs>